Uh, I think maybe just to get some uh, administrative things out the way, as you'll notice, there are 111 people that have sort of been involved and responsible with regards to the plan functional traits courses. Uh, but don't worry, you're only hearing from myself and Ur today, not all of us. So it's a little bit shorter and we'll specifically be talking about sort of how the courses have incorporated teaching fair and open sciences throughout the years. Um, the reason there's two of us speaking is to kind of give you a bit of a two pronged approach. Um, so I'll start with the student perspective as a, a recent participant and sort of just highlight how the course works and what I've learned or what I took home with me. And then it will follow up sort of more from the course development side of things. So how and why these certain elements were incorporated into the courses. Um, so to start off with, as most of you already saw, um, uh, my expectations for the course, uh, which I think mirrors most students are quite simple. Go in, learn some new theory, some new skills, maybe make some new friends along the way. Uh, but as we all know, you should always leave room for extras. And I think ultimately I came home with a lot of extras and most of those extras were sort of related to open science. And I think it really helps that it's from the get go really part of the course. So even to start off with when we're learning new theory, we're also learning about things like reproducibility and the importance of data documentation. And it's actually made explicitly clear uh, that it's sort of an expected course output that we'll be working on, you know, documenting our data. Um, throughout the course and then moving on to the field side of things. Yes, we're out in the field collecting cool data, but it's also within this uh, framework called the traits wheel, um, which is in place to make sure that the data are collected in a very standardized manner. One of the important characters is Yoda, who I will be talking about a bit later, and he makes sure that we're doing things correctly and checks up on us. Following on this, um, there's also a lot of workshops uh, after the field work, which focuses on the reproducibility side of things. Um, and this includes working with R uh, specifically within the tidyverse, um, but then also the idea of code sharing via GitHub. And all the while we're also utilizing this as we're working on our smaller subgroup projects. Um, so the idea is that, you know, each group has its own GitHub repo that we're sharing things on. And of course, we're also furiously working on the data documentation side of things. And I think this sort of ultimately, you know, sets you up when you start looking at the bigger picture, and that can even just be a big, the bigger picture within context of the course. So the course puts a lot of emphasis on working in a sort of collaborative environment. And you sort of realize that, you know, if we want to collaborate effectively and efficiently, it really helps to have these sort of open workflows in place, but also to be in a space that encourages or um, I guess you could say enforces in the nicest way possible to work in a manner that is, um, you know, open, transparent and fair and sort of working in this sort of microcosm of what science can be, I think really helps you as a young researcher sort of contextualize and understand how science fits together and, you know, all these boxes you're taking home, how I can stack them and fit them together more effectively. And the fact that it really helps when you've got some friends to help you with the packing, but also not just to help you doing the actual science, but also to hold your hand. I think as we discussed yesterday, it can be quite scary the first time you push your code to GitHub and you think, oh my goodness, it looks like a toddler wrote this. Um, and to have, you know, instructors standing over your shoulder while you go and commit for the first time does make it a little bit less scary. And it also means you probably end up looking at them with stars in your eyes and you think that they are just amazing. Um, but yeah, I mean, why do I think this works as a teaching and learning experience? So, as I said, I end up going home with a lot of boxes uh, after being in Peru. I didn't get charged overweight, which is quite nice. But I think the big thing is also understanding that open science is a part of all of these boxes. Um, you know, in the real sense of we're working with learning about systematic data collection and documentation, um, and that's sort of present throughout the whole process. You know, it has to do with when we're collecting the data, when we sharing the data, we need the skills to do that. And obviously, ultimately documenting the data and, you know, this whole idea of learning by doing. So 
as I said, we're actively working with this in our group project. Um, there's also someone sort of holding your hand, making it a little bit more digestible and sort of a bit less scary. I think ultimately it's also being part of this bigger community. And I think seeing, yes, that, you know, it's easier to collaborate when you've got these open workflows in place, but it's also a lot easier when you're in a community that also supports you and encourages, um, you know, that idea of open science. I think ultimately I went away with a lot of boxes, but also a lot of boxes that are sort of colored by open science. And uh, with that, I'm going to try and hand over to Erd. Thank you, Tanya, for um, the first part of the talk. Um, and I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna continue here. So, of course, Tanya was forced to, <laughs> and, and paid to like give a very shiny picture of what the course, of the experience of the course. Um, I'm just joking here. Um, but of course, this is not how we started. Um, we've had five iterations of this course now. And in the beginning, we had really not much of an idea what open science was and what fair data was, what reproducibility meant. And over time, we have um, added little elements of open science into the course. Um, and um, we've had a really, really steep learning curve. And some of the elements we added because we had to, you will see in a minute. And then we got really excited about the whole idea of open science. And so it just became more and more. Um, so I'm starting with some examples about systematic data collection. So I started to use, or basically in the course, it's a, it's a field course uh, where we uh, collect uh, trait, plant trait data. Um, so we have these envelopes where we have all the samples uh, for, for each sample and envelope, and they are handwritten. They were handwritten and uh, with a lot of text, and it was unreadable, and that caused a lot of problem problems in the data later. So what we do now is we have we print these stickers that help the person that is um, collecting the data to keep track of all the information that needs to be on the envelope. Um, it's more readable, and we also added these um, these barcodes f to each sample. And so basically, nobody ever has to type in the uh, the sample ID anymore. So you just um, beep the envelope, um, and that's also, also, of course, also a lot of fun um, for the students. Um, and it increases, like the has increased the quality of the data a lot. Um, if you're interested in how we how we do this, make these barcodes, so all the code that we use for the course is available on GitHub. So just follow this link. Um, another example is the scanning process. So the, the leaves are scanned to then uh, calculate the leaf area from the scans. Um, and because we, ha we are quite a diverse group of students um, and they come with their laptops from different countries and they have different settings and operating systems, um, all of these caused a lot of problems. Um, and here is just a picture of some raw data from one of the first courses. And what we expected here was a, a linear relationship between leaf area and dry mass. And clearly there are some problems in the data here. Um, and so we realized that we need something, a system that actually controls the, the scanning process better. So what we do now is we have these little Raspberry Pis that control the whole scanning process. Um, and then here is Yoda again. <laughs> so there is a, there is a button um, that you can, that you can uh, push and then Yoda, can, like a little script starts that checks all the scans that you have done so far. So it controls for that the resolution of all the pictures is, is right and the, the ID of the sample is correct and so on. And if something goes wrong, then a big red screen pops up and, and tells you what has gone wrong. So you can go back and fix it. 
Um, again, the whole um, script to set up the Raspberry Pis is on GitHub. Uh, if, yeah, if anybody's interested. Um, then the the plant fun functional tray course is not a standard standard field course, but it is embedded in a real research context. Um, and this is very motivating for the students because they know that the data that they are collecting is actually going somewhere and it is not ending up in a dusty drawer somewhere. Um, but the course is not a open science course, but we little elements of open science practice and data handling into the course. And so the students learn these practices by actually doing them. Um, so for example, they learn to collaborate on code via GitHub. Um, we teach them best data handling practice, as far as we know. Um, as you've already heard, data documentation is really important um, to us and um, but it also it has also undergone like a evolution kind of. So after the first course, um, the students wrote a little report about their results. Um, the report was very bad because the students were not very motivated to write a report like after the course was finished. Um, and so we decided we need something else. So then we started to um, have these large readme files that document every step of the data collection and everything that has that was not done according to protocols, like all deviations and so on. So basically they wrote the whole method chapter of a paper. Um, and that was much better. And what we do now, the, the practice that we are moving towards is that for every course we want to produce a data paper. I think it was mentioned a couple of times yesterday. Um, so basically we, we want to um, publish the raw data, the code that is needed to clean all the data, and then a clean version of the data, together with a paper that describes the data in, in a basic way. Um, and also we let all the students be part of this process, because we think it's important that they can also see, um, be part of this and see how a paper is published. And then to come to the last point, um, we believe very strongly that science is a community effort where collaboration should be possible across levels, so no, not only among professors and researchers. Um, and in these courses, we, we go to different places in the world and we kind of um, have local, st local students from these areas. So we are quite a diverse group of, of people. Um, which is also a benefit because then a lot of different skills and backgrounds come together and kind of produce better research output. Um, and so to, to do that, we make the data accessible, document it properly, and then we facilitate this collaborative environment. And we do this by several things. So for example, we have these um, data sharing agreements um, that everybody has to sign before the course. And this just um, makes sure that people uh, know that they are data, when they collect data, they are data owners. So, so it defines all the rights and the obligations if you want to be part of, of this course and, and the whole project. Um, this is something rather new, but we have a web page now. Um, within this web page, there is an alumni network, so where all the students from from all the courses have access to, with more information for them. Um, and then we also have this man manuscript um, registration proposal registration thing. So everybody that wants to publish or make something with the data, they have to register their ideas there, and then it's assessed and accepted or not. Um, and this also gives everybody like a, a great overview over um, all the projects people are working on and that it makes it easier to collaborate with people because you can just contact them and, and ask them to be part of something. Um, and a couple of cool things have 
<clears throat> already come out of, of these courses. So that's our first um, paper that a student actually um, led himself. So that was from the second um, course in China. Um, now we have, from the last um, course, we also have four students that were key in like leading um, two publications that are still under review. Um, and I guess today I, I'm giving a presentation together with one of the students, so that's, <laughs> I think, a new thing and the list of things we can add. Um, and so to conclude, um, I just want to say three things. Um, we spend a lot less time to um, curate the data from these courses because of the standardized um, way of collecting and checking the data. Um, the educational and the scientific quality of the courses has increased a lot. Um, and this is because we've added a lot of these open science elements into the courses. Uh, oops. And then kind of the, the learning outcome from the students, the things, the boxes that they take home has really increased over time. And I think that's a, that's a really good thing. <laughs> so... <laughs> I like people taking pictures. <laughs> so with this, I would like to thank all uh, of you to listen to my talk and all the people that have been involved in, in the courses over time. <laughs>